Okay, good morning everyone. Um, so, first I should probably say I could probably talk for three times as long as I've got um, for this, so I won't. Uh, and I'm going to focus mainly on the uh, methodology behind what we did in the study um, and just give a kind of brief overview of the results rather than going right down into the detail. Um, so this is a study that we actually did late in 2015. Um, it's just taken me a while to get around to actually doing anything with it. Um, we were commissioned by WIG to um, undertake an excavation uh, at Belford in Wiltshire, and um, we found a uh, Anglo-Saxon burial site of 146 individuals. Uh, it was very close to our head office, um, so I thought this is a, an excellent opportunity to look at how we're recording burials and see if there's a better way of doing it. Most of the stuff we were doing at the time was all hand planning with the occasional use of uh, rectified photography. So um, the aim was mainly to understand you know, which methods are the best in terms of quality, but also in terms of time efficiency and cost, and can we try and get a balance between those two. Um, so we looked at hand planning, obviously, uh, as kind of our baseline, rectified photography, photogrammetry, and terrestrial laser scanning. Um, we kind of had a number of preconceptions going in about what was going to be the best technique, um, but rather than kind of dismiss any, anything out of hand, we thought we'll, uh, we'll use everything and we'll see how good uh, they all are. Um, so for example, photogrammetry, uh, we expected maybe it was to be a little bit less accurate than um, things like laser scanning. Um, we expected rectified photography to be really quick, um, but potentially problematic because of the constraints of that technique. Uh, and we expected hand planning to be rather variable depending on who was doing it. Um, so overall, we did uh, six barrels for our uh, test at 146. Um, we also used the seventh as a kind of test case to see what parameters we might want to use. Um, for this, we um, ended up adopt, uh, adapting how we were doing our laser scanning. We found that the settings we were using weren't giving us the point density that we needed to really get the detail on the burials. Um, so we changed that, and then after that, it was much better. And we also tried um, uh, structured laser scanning. Um, and uh, we kind of decided that that wasn't really appropriate. Um, so we skipped it for the uh, rest of the barrels. I'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, so everything was georeferenced with a GPS, uh, accurate to plus or minus two centimeters. We could have got a better accuracy with a tilt station, but because we were trying to look at it from a commercial point of view and kind of commercial standard practice, um, we we're focusing on what we'd usually do. So usually we'd use a GPS rather than a tilt station just because they can be a little bit harder to uh, get hold of and short notice. Um, and also it tends to mean you know, extra equipment, extra cost. So where we can, we preference, uh, preference the use of GPS. Um, we also used uh, standard kind of um, DSLRs, nothing fancy, no calibrated lenses, again, to match our usual practice. So hand plans, um, again, pretty standard, uh, drawn one to 10 on gridded plumber trace, uh, we use planning frames, tape measures, plumb bobs uh, to help with the drawing process. Um, the average time uh, across a broad range of samples from the site was around about two hours, depending on the individual doing it. Um, after they've been drawn, we then scaled them up one to one and digitised them in CAD. Um, and again, varying slightly on the burial, but it usually took around about two, two and a half hours to digitise which is pretty much in line with what our graphics team found in previous uh, excavation sites. So rectified photography, uh, fairly common. I'm sure a lot of you have probably done it before. Um, commercial archaeologists use it a lot for planning uh, burials, just because it's quick. Um, so targets were placed at the bottom of the grave as close to the plane that the burial is lying on as possible. Um, and then additional targets were placed around the grave, cut, so that we could rectify that separately. Um, all photographs taken from the top of the ladder so that we can get a full shot of the, um, of the burial and perpendicular as possible. Um, but two of the burials, uh, such as this one here, which kind of um, some of you might have noticed what's wrong, um, the burial was right up against the grave cut. And in order for rectified photography to work, everything that you want to rectify needs to be within your uh, geo-reference targets. 
In this case, we couldn't actually get a target uh, on the other side of the barrel because there's no space for it. All we could have done is put it on the wall, but then obviously you're coming off of the plane of the barrel. So kind of invalidating the technique anyway. Um, so two of the burials we didn't do with rectified photography. Um, we could have got around this by using a tablet PC on site and marking on the picture after it has been taken uh, where the survey point was going to be. But again, not really standard site practice. Um, we don't have tablets to go out on every single site, so we avoided doing that. Um, further limitation of uh, georectifying photographs is that it only works on a single plane. Um, you tend not to have a single flat plane at the base of a grave, so your targets aren't necessarily going through the plane you want. And also, a skeleton is 3D, so technically can't actually be rectified properly anyway. Um, that introduces errors into your final plan. Um, so again, after data capture, um, it was digitized in CAD back in the office. So, uh, photogrammetry. Um, with those targets still in place, uh, we took a, a series of photographs for photogrammetry. We kind of came up with a standard uh, procedure of how we were going to take photographs and apply the same thing to all of the graves. Um, it was slightly scale dependent and it was slightly position dependent in that if there was you know, clear occlusion because of, say, hip uh, position, we'd take extra photographs to try and compensate for that. So it was between 20 and 40 photographs per burial, so not a huge number. Um, overall, that took you know, about 15 minutes. Any photographs that weren't any good were discarded and then retaken immediately in the field. Um, we then processed them through photogrammetric software uh, and created 3D meshes and author images of those meshes. Um, whilst obviously the 3D mesh is internally consistent with itself, um, as long as the processing has worked properly, um, we decided to do a process of not introducing um, survey points in the processing, but to use survey points as a check afterwards. So although the models will be internally consistent, we then demonstrate how accurate they are in real world afterwards. Um, they uh, were referenced to the uh, GPS coordinates, um, which I said, plus or minus two centimeters, um, and everything lined up pretty well. Um, obviously, we've heard plenty of times before, photogrammetric processing can take a long time. But it's not exactly a particularly user-intensive process. You set up some parameters, it runs for a while, you repeat. Um, so the actual person time wasn't particularly much on this. Um, I think, where was it? Yeah, capture, processing, and digitizing in terms of actual person time was about three hours per burial. So, uh, trust relay scanning. Um, we use a Faraday Focus X330 um, and an inverting tripod so we didn't get you know, huge data voids underneath our tripod. Um, so as you don't know the system, it's uh, got a ranging area of plus or minus two millimeters, about 10 meters. Um, so at this kind of range, you can basically say your scans can be at least accurate to two mil. Um, we took around about five scans per burial, again, depending on layout. Um, and these were registered in Pharisee to an accuracy of, again, a few millimeters. Um, we then produced uh, author images of those scans and put the scans and author images, uh, sorry, the point clouds and the author images into CAD uh, for digitization because each one kind of had different um, benefits. The scanning took around about 45 minutes per burial um, and then it was about two and a half hours again to digitize. So as I said, we also tried uh, structured light scanning. In this case, we used the Faro Freestyle. Um, we found that although it's a relatively quick technique, the point density we were getting wasn't particularly high. We could have got a much higher point density with multiple sweeps um, to try and get towards kind of terrestrial laser scanning density, but that would have ended up taking longer than the terrestrial laser scan was taking. So we decided it probably wasn't worth further exploring it. Um, and a lot of uh, structured light scanners don't really like working in direct sunlight as well. So then there's problems of uh, introducing shade, which is obviously extra man hours potentially, problems of high winds. Um, so yeah, after that first test burial, we kind of scrapped it. Um, 
So after all the digitization was done, we overlaid each of those plans using the GPS coordinates uh, to reference everything. Um, we compared the plans for completeness, i.e. how many bones are missing compared to the other techniques, uh, and the positioning and size accuracy of the bones uh, and the grave cut. We also did uh, measurements on the length of body, shoulder width, pelvis width, and the length and width of all of the long bones. Uh, obviously these aren't all complete uh, samples, so you can see, hopefully, just about in this image here, um, we took the most extreme endpoints of a bone uh, and then took a line down the middle of its width in order to measure um, length. Uh, and then we chose that uh, midpoint of the length of the bone to measure the width. And we did that same process for all of the plans for all of the different uh, techniques. Um, we also went uh, a little bit further with the 3D mesh and we did a direct comparison in cloud compare uh, to the laser scan point cloud. Um, so you can kind of see here what happens if you don't do it right. So although cloud compare, its distance computation is only um, a height variable, if your X and Y are out, obviously your height is then offset and therefore it shows that error. So this has been deliberately offset by about two centimeters just to show what a bad data set would look like. Um, anything green is roughly right, but then as you go towards red or towards blue, you're getting distance uh, uh, errors in either positive or negative. Um, so uh, what we've got here is some overlain plans, probably not overly visible uh, on the screen, but we've got um, red for the photogrammetry plans, uh, light blue for the laser scan, black for rectified photography, and green for hand plans. Um, you might just be able to see on this uh, leftmost one, uh, the green uh, skeleton is distinctly shorter and the black one is distinctly taller. Um, so these are the kind of things that we were looking at in our plans to try and see how accurate are these techniques. Um, oh, that's a bit better. Um, so, uh, as the laser scan is the only known accuracy method, you know, it's got a, a state of tolerance, we kind of use this as the baseline against which we uh, compared everything else. Um, the quality of the visualization in the laser scan made identifying some of the bones uh, a little bit difficult. Um, and uh, overall, about 11 bones on average per barrel were missing. For the hand plans, um, their positioning was consistently different than the other techniques. Um, on average, 19 bones missing per burial. Um, the average bone length was shorter and the average bone width uh, was larger. For rectified photography, um, the positioning was broadly consistent. Um, 14 bones on average missing uh, from each plan. Um, the average length of the bones was longer than the laser scan and the average width was wider. Uh, photogrammetry, um, the positioning was very close to the laser scans. Uh, the average length was a little bit longer uh, and the average width of the bones was a little bit wider. Um, but on average, only had six bones missing per plan. So uh, going on from that, we did the statistical analysis in Cloud Compare. Um, and the mean distance between the mesh and the point clouds ranged from 0.35 mil to 4.34 mil, uh, and a standard deviation of 1.82 to 48.3. Um, this one is our best. As you can see, uh, it's pretty much all green. The bottom image gives you an idea of actually how the skeleton looks within the grave cut, whereas the top one, uh, the point size has increased, so you can see the areas of error a little bit better. Uh, this was our worst one. Um, you can see, especially in the top image, you've got broad bands of colour around the edge. Um, this was definitely the worst of the models. Um, the reason was it was such a large grave cut um, that our standard methodology kind of didn't work very well. We didn't get all of the edges of the cut modelled properly, um, which you can see in this image here. We've clearly got gaps around the edge where there should be grave cut, which we didn't get. So that is introducing a huge amount of error into our statistical analysis. Um, so if we go, okay, our methodology was a bit crap there, let's, let's try something different. 
and just chop out the uh, middle part and focus on that, the part that we've definitely modelled properly, the um, error goes all the way down to 1.74 mil, where as it was um, 4.3. So um, considerably better. Um, so when we uh, did this and took the averages of all the barrels again, uh, the average mean distance was 1.3 mil and the standard deviation 4.3. Um, so, uh, photogrammetry was uh, probably the most complete and it was pretty damn accurate compared to the uh, laser scan, aside from the fact that we had to um, adjust the methodology a bit going forward. Um, because its visualisation was so much better than the laser scan, uh, we thought, well, actually, let's use the photogrammetry as a, a test, as our, our baseline as well, and see how that changes. Um, Overall, everything was a little bit closer to the photogrammetry than the laser scanning, um, but no kind of significant uh, changes. So as I said, we also looked at costs, um, time taken, equipment costs, etc., all uh, totaled up. Um, we assumed that 10% of the barrels would be digitized for publication, um, and across uh, all of the techniques, all the digital techniques saved thousands upon thousands of pounds over hand planning. Um, so all significantly cheaper. Um, so overall, no kind of benefit in quality for hand planning. Um, the digital methods were all better. Um, but even the uh, photogrammetry, which we didn't expect much of, um, was actually, turns out, it looks like it's the best method. It's as accurate as a laser scan. Um, it's cheaper, it's faster. Um, it's considerably easier to do. You don't need specialist equipment, you just need some software. Um, rectified photography, better than hand planning, but still not quite good enough. Um, so as a result of this experiment, uh, we've now broadly changed our practice in uh, Wessex archaeology, and now all of our burials are being recorded with photogrammetry rather than any other technique. Uh, a bit rushed there at the end, sorry, but uh, all done.